All right, tonight you are in the kitchen with Jelly007.com and his new ninja foodie. And what we're going to do tonight is a butternut squash. And the foodie, it, it does it fantastic. And here's why. What we're going to do is we're going to take this, I'm going to take this butternut squash. I'm going to run it under cold water and, and wash it well with my Scotch Brite. And then this is a nine inch butternut squash, a six and a half quart foodie is nine and a half inches diameter. In other words, it fits. So you want to make sure when you're buying your butternut squash, you get one that, that'll fit it. But what we'll do is I'm going to put it, put it in, put one cup of water in, put the pressure lid on, 10 minutes, high pressure. Once that's done, quick release. All right, and then we'll pull it out, and that's the beauty of it. If you've ever tried to cut one of these in half, the way it is right here, it's not that simple. But once you pressure cook it for 10 minutes, it slices in half, I'll say, a lot easier. All right, then we'll take out the seeds, clean out the seeds. I'm sure if you've ever done butternut squash, you know what I'm talking about. So you clean out the seeds. Uh, I'm going to lay it back in there, uh, meat side up or flesh side up, poke a few holes in it with a knife. And this is what I've been using, although I've got all kinds of butters, but this has been easy because, like I said, I've only had this a week and a half, so I've only done one other, and it was excellent, especially the cutting in half method worked well. But I put butter on there, brush it around, uh, brown sugar. This is just what I do. I know you may have your own, uh, but brown sugar, uh, sea salt, kosher sea salt, and fresh ground black pepper. And if you don't have a recipe, that works great. I'll just tell you, I and mean, there's plenty of things. I mean, I've got honey, you can put agave, uh, uh, maple syrup, on and on. The sky's the limit on what you can do with one of these, and I'm sure you know that if you're watching this. So once that, that, once that happens, we're gonna close this lid, then do 10 minutes on roast bake feature at 400 degrees. And the beauty of this is you can just raise it and watch it and make sure it's doing what you want it to do. Take your knife, poke it, make sure it's getting, you know, fairly done at that point by the time the 10 minutes is up. And if it's not, you just add some time. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great item, it's a great device to do this in. Once that was done the other night, I think I ended up with 10, maybe 12 minutes. I don't remember. And every squash will be different. So, you know, you're going to have to, it's not a set time. You're going to have to kind of watch it and monitor it. But then I went to the air crisp feature for five minutes. And man, that put a char on it that made it beautiful. And uh, you'll see in just a minute when we're done with it. But anyhow, I'm going to get some of that started. And I'm going to come right back, bring you back, and we're going to see how it works. Okay, so I wanted to mention I have this particular basket or trivet in there. On, it's set in that, on that position. I also poked a couple of holes in here. Not that it probably matter, but a place for steam to go. And I did put, I put a cup and a half of water. A cup doesn't quite cover the bottom. I don't feel like it's no big deal. I just made it a cup and a half. Don't have to worry about it. Now, whoops, I almost did that again. Put the pressure lid on. Make sure it's sealed. We're going to hit pressure. Leave it on high. And it's already at 10 minutes. Press start, and we are off and running. And as soon as that happens, we're going to do a quick release, and we're going to see how that looks and cut it in half. Be right back. Okay, so we're coming up on the final few seconds. And again, all you have to do once it times out is do a quick release, and we're going to put it right over here and cut it. There it is. It's done. And... You know, I always want to watch where you put your hand. I mean, you just don't want to put it over there. I say that with my Instant Pots and everything. But you do want to pay attention to where your fingers are when you uh, flip that lever. Just don't get hurt. But there you go. Okay, so the pin just dropped. The, the 10 minutes of cook time has passed. It took about a minute for it to bleed down. Uh, the pin just dropped, and we're going to... Pull it out of there, get this somewhere, and then we're going to let it, we're going to cut it in half, and then we're going to cut those seeds out. So, 
I've got to find my device to clean those seeds with, which a lot of times I use an ice cream scoop, but sometimes you have to be careful once they're cooked. You'll push this bottom out right here because it all your seeds are right here. So long story short, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna to, uh, find my device. I'll come right back and it's a tablespoon. It's an old tablespoon I have and it works real well, but I'll be right back. We'll cut it in half and clean it out. Okay, I found my old tablespoon. You can see it is an old tablespoon uh, measuring device, but it, it just works real well. All right, now, see if it's cool enough for me to hold, and it's it's still pretty warm. I'm going to put a glove on. You might could, but I'm going to. And then I'll show you. This is this is what's, what makes the beauty of it. Now, I'm going to take that stem off. You don't have to cut through the stem. And then... I'm hoping you can see that. I'm going to look and make sure you can, and I think you can. It is simple or a lot simpler than it is before they're cooked. And I'm going to try it without this glove. I just can't feel it real well. So just kind of go right down through there. And, and I might have missed the center just a little bit, but it's not going to hurt anything. But as you can see, that's a lot better. If you've ever cut one of these completely raw, you know what I mean. So then you just take these out and you can see it helps a little bit for it to be cooked. But you still have to work it a little bit to get all the, all the stuff out. But I'll be honest with you, most of the part I'm eating is right here anyhow. So, uh, just like I said, you want to hold right here if you're worried about it blowing out the back side. Because it, it will... But as you can see, there's no need in you staying here for all of this. It's just this right here for a few minutes. And then we're going to get the butter and the uh, sugar, salt, and pepper on. But I'll get these cleaned out and I'll come right back. Okay, so now is when I just make a few slices. Now it's still... You know, it still needs some cooking. So I just poke a few holes, try not to go through it anywhere. Doubt that would hurt, but I just try not to go through it anywhere. And this one, I believe, is a little larger than the one I've already done. So I may be doing 15 minutes of roast time. So, again, once we get it in here and start cooking, you'll see what I mean. I'm going to prick it along the way and just see how easy this knife inserts into that flesh but right now just the normal stuff you would do to one before you roasted it because that's really kind of all we're doing you know so I'm going to get this stuff done and get them in here and get it started. But you see where I'm going with it. All I'm going to do is put some brown sugar on top of it. And salt and pepper. And again, I mean, I know everybody's got a lot of different recipes. I, You know, I have. I've tried different things on them before that, that do work well. But there's nothing wrong with this recipe right here. There, you know, for a quick, simple, you know, not got to have any special ingredients other than the brown sugar. That's the only thing that a lot of people may not have, but it's it's very simple to get. And uh, you probably could just use regular sugar, I guess. <laughs> That's kind of a fetch. I think the brown sugar is worth going after. And uh, we're going to leave it about like this right here, as far as brown sugar. And I mean, I've even got chili powder and stuff like that you can put on them. You know, I mean, uh, parsley and stuff you can add for for looks, you know. So, try and keep that brown sugar out of my salt. And I'm making this video a little longer than it has to be, but I, I guess I just decided I'm gonna do that. And you can fast forward <laughs> if you need to. But that's what I do to them right here. That, or that's what I did to the, the one that I had yesterday. Or this evening, it was either this evening or yesterday. It was it was this evening, come to think of it. <laughs> Days are running together. But 
here it is in the in the ninja and that's what it looks like now and we're fixing to do a, a few minutes of cooking on the broil or actually on the bake on the roast feature not broil i'm sorry on the bake roast and uh i'm gonna change that temperature to 400 i'm gonna go ahead and set it for i'm gonna set it for 10 minutes because we can add and i'm gonna press start and we are off and running and i'll bring you back in just a minute and we'll see how it looks around five minutes okay for the record we're coming up on five minutes we're gonna take a peek right now and as you can see it's coming along nowhere near done close the lid back it starts right back up again i think these may go i think these may need a little longer than the ones i did earlier so we'll see we're gonna poke them back and tell they didn't need even testing yet so we will at the 10 minute mark okay so we're coming up on the the end of a total of 10 minutes under the bake and roast feature so let's see what they look like oh they don't look bad but i like i said they're they're not done they're, they, they definitely need more cooking but not a problem we're gonna hit bake roast well we have to let it go all the way to the it has to do something here all right we're gonna do that Press bake roast again. We're gonna go back to 400, and I'm gonna do five more minutes at least, and then we're going Then we'll see. We'll read it again in just a second. But there we go. Be back in five minutes. Okay, so we're coming up on a total of 15 minutes of roast time, and there it is. Gonna take a look at it, and they look excellent. And you know what? I think they're about where I want them. That's uh, for now we're going to, because we're fixing, I mean, they may be a little bit, you know, not really though. They're getting really, really close. And by the time we do this, uh, the, the air crisp, they're going to be, they're going to be perfect. So we're going to do five minutes now. I have to wait on this thing to kind of go through its cycle. We're going to do air crisp, 400, four, five minutes and this is and this is something we'll have to watch them now i may stop them during the five and just take a look to make sure they're not going too far but this is all this is what chars them and gives them a great look but here we go i'll bring you back in a second we'll check on them i don't know around uh, two and a half minutes be right back okay there went two and a half minutes and yes, that looks good. We're gonna let it go more though. So, lid right back down, it's simple as that. I mean, what does that take? <laughs> Five seconds, it's a, great, it's a great feature and easy to access whatever you're cooking, but we'll let that go another two and a half and be back. Okay, so I'm gonna call them done at this point because they're, they're done enough for what I wanted. Now I just wanna see how they look and that's five minutes of air crisping. They look extremely well to me. That is, in fact, they're so, I'm going to have to use my glove to get them out of there. But you can see them inside the, the foodie. And I'm going to bring them out. You know, I'm going to, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this one out. We're going to let that one go just a little bit longer just to see how it does with five more minutes. That way we'll know. The other one's browned a little darker than that. So... They charred up a little better, but there's nothing wrong with that. That's a perfectly cooked and looks great. In fact, that one, both of them are. So we may pull them both out, but I'm going to check them out. I'm going to get one of them out, and we're going to see. I'll be right back. Okay, I poked them a little bit, and they're done. I'm going to pull them both out. I mean, they look fantastic. There's nothing wrong with the way they look. And I'm fixing to eat part of one cut one up i'm gonna get it off of here and get it on that plate where i can cut it a little better but as you can see that works great to lift them out of there because i was going to have trouble getting that out if you could see it was going to break up so for a presentation you lift them out with that and then get them off of there onto your plate and you don't do any damage to them but i mean that looks good and 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 they are the one i've already ate was excellent 
So, I'll be right back. Okay, so there they are after they set out for about five minutes. And as you can see, I mean, to me, that is cooked absolutely perfect. And here's, you know, just a few of the things you can put on them. I mean, I don't have to tell you, if you eat butternut squash, you know. So, we're gonna cut open, cut one open and kind of see what it looks like right here. And it, it's very hot, so I'm gonna let it go. But I mean, that is, uh, you know, <laughs> again, that's perfect. And they, they're beautiful, man. They, they present, they, well, that, if I hadn't been poking it all along, in other words, 10 minutes under pressure, 15 minutes of, uh, of the roast feature, and then five minutes of air crisp, and, uh, and you don't, you probably wouldn't have to poke them. You know what though, every, every squash that cooks a little different. In fact, the ones I've cooked earlier today cooked a little different, but not, not much. They browned a little different maybe, but they're beautiful. That right there's perfect. That's a, that's a, the cover of a magazine in a lot of places. But there you go. Uh, whether I put some of that on there or not, I don't know. But it doesn't need it. That's a perfect, mm, a perfect butternut squash, if you ask me. And the Ninja Foodie, again, that, that it, it's doing everything I wanted to do. I gotta say. And the brown feature really adds a lot to pressure cooking. But anyhow, in the kitchen with Jelly, www.jelly007.com. Thanks for watching my video. Y'all come back to see me. Like, share, subscribe, all of the above. And y'all have a good night and come back.